Hello, everyone. This is Karen. Hi, everybody. I'm Shane. Today we're looking at part one of experience endless summer days in Saint Petersburg, and the vocabulary、Why? words are glow. Glow. My watch glows in the dark, so I can still read the time. So cool. <laughs> I know. Faint. Faint. There was a faint sound of music coming from outside the window. What is it?、Mm -hmm. Collection. Collection. In this room, I keep my collection of rare butterflies.、Oh, yeah, they're everywhere. So beautiful. Yeah.、Wow. Illustration. Illustration. The illustrations in this book are beautiful. Mm-hmm. Explore. Explore. It's dangerous to explore abandoned buildings. Very dangerous. That's right. But, but you know where you can go explore, and it's pretty cool. Saint Petersburg. You're a、Ooh. genius. Yes. Where so, is Saint Petersburg? What Taiwan? Let's start with that. Come on.、Oh, no. Come、wrong? on. Give me a better、oh, guess than that. Russia. That's right.、Mm. It's in Russia. Oh,、uh, I. I think they have en almost endless summers there, right? That's right. Twenty-four hours of daylight. Practically, right? right? It's almost twenty-four、yeah. hours a day of sunlight. So there's plenty of time to go see stuff. So what should we see? Well, there's a really, really nice museum called the Hermitage Museum. Okay. You know, it has over three million items. <laughs> what? Over three million items in the museum. Wow. Yeah, and it's the second largest museum in the world.、Ooh. So if you want to see some, you know, European painting,、mm. and then the ancient suits of armor and other treasures. That's the museum to go to. They have a really cool church there called、uh -uh. the Church of the Savior on Spilled Blood. <gasps> Sounds scary, right? But it's、okay. really cool. It's very beautiful, and it has kind of like、uh, onion-shaped domes.、Mm. And inside, there are beautiful illustrations from the Bible. So it's、okay. a very beautiful thing to see. So it's not scary. It's really beautiful. It's actually very beautiful. <laughs> it's like a fairy tale. Okay. Well, let's go visit Saint Petersburg. Okay. Experience endless summer days in Saint Petersburg. It's three o'clock a.m. The sky glows with a faint orange color as the sun gets low, but it never turns completely dark. Welcome to summer in Saint Petersburg. During this period, the Russian city gets almost 24 hours of light per day. This phenomenon, combined with the city's rich cultural history and exciting nightlife. Make Saint Petersburg a place that people flock to for their summer vacation. Today's lesson is called "Experience Endless Summer Days in Saint Petersburg," Part One. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff, and I'm Mike. And since it's summertime, it's time for Russia. That's what people always say, right? Well, I, mean, I mean, there are worse times to go to Russia、True. than in the summer. True, considering that the Russian winter is a、uh, deadly. Yes, that's true. It has true. stopped many, many invading forces、it's, throughout time. It's very romantic in a Russian novel, but if you go there for real, parts of your body might fall off because it's so cold. So why not check out Russia? During the、uh, summer time, and here's a bit of good news: since the sun almost never goes down in northern Russia, you'll have tons of time for sightseeing. Yeah, the sun it doesn't it go、really、down doesn't. sometimes. I believe they call that white nights. Anyways, though, it's 3 a.m. You're in Saint Petersburg, and the sky glows with a faint orange color as the sun gets low. But it never turns completely dark. So it's three in the morning. It's three a.m. Wow! It's the day has just begun. It's three hours after midnight, and the sky is still glowing. Yes, here we have the verb glow to talk about. Okay, if something glows, it gives off light. It doesn't flicker. It doesn't become faint or dark and then light again. It gives off light. Steadily. So here it's 3 a.m. and the sun is setting, but the sky is still glowing. It's still kind of bright outside, even though it's the middle of the night or super early in the morning. For example, my watch glows in the dark, so I can still read the time. Yes, I can turn that light on and I can see the time, even if it's dark. 
Mm, very, very interesting. Three in the morning, and you can still see around you because the sun is still there. Although it is very faint, that sentence told us. If something is faint, this adjective means it's very hard to notice it. It's there, but just a very, in a very small amount, just a little bit. We often use this. For things we can sense, we might talk about a faint light, a weak light that you can see, but it's easy to、uh, it's easy to miss it. Or a faint sound, if you hear the the tapping of someone against your the, your door or something, you're like, is, is, is that someone at the door? I can barely hear that sound. Or if you're in a restaurant, oh, the faint taste of food. Oh, if your food doesn't taste like very much, there's just the faint taste of honey in my honey cake. That would not be a very well-made thing because the taste is there, but it's almost impossible to sense. It's there, but in a tiny amount. And our example sentence reads: There was a faint sound of music coming from outside the window. Yeah, is that is that music? I, I, know, I can't tell. It sounds maybe like noise. Maybe but it someone might be upstairs is playing a CD I, I or record. I don't know. It, yeah, the noise is very faint. It's hard to hear or hard to perceive in some way. Anyways, welcome to summer in Saint Petersburg. Thank you. It's 3 a.m. It's not super bright outside, but yes, the sun is still technically up. The sky is still glowing. Anyways, summer in Saint Petersburg. During this period, the Russian city gets almost 24 hours of light. Per day, <laughs> so maybe the sun will go down just a bit, but you're still going to get a gigantic amount of sunshine or light from the sun.、Mm, very interesting. This phenomenon, combined with this city's rich cultural history and exciting nightlife, makes Saint Petersburg a place that people flock to. For their summer vacation, we should also point out it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world, with wonderful old buildings and palaces that are there for people to explore. So wonderful things about it. It's amazing to be out in the nighttime with some light there, but also there's a lot of stuff the city has to offer at any time of the year. And why not go in the summer? At least you won't need to bring your winter boots. With you, that, that's a plus. Hopefully, hopefully not. Let's take a break, and then we'll be back with more about Saint Petersburg. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。这次要介绍旅游景点是俄罗斯的第二大城市 Saint Petersburg， 圣彼得堡。它位于俄罗斯的西北部，历史悠久，还有北方威尼斯这个称号。那大家都知道，俄罗斯冬天的气候非常严寒。刚刚 Jeff 老师用到 deadly 这个字来形容俄罗斯的冬天 ，deadly 它是拼作 d e a d l y 这个字，形容致命的、致死的。好像我们这么怕冷的人啊，当然要选择夏天去旅游喽。那我们现在就开始来幻想自己人在圣彼得堡。那现在是凌晨三点钟。这时候呢，不是一片漆黑哦，它是日暮低垂，天空还泛着微弱橘色的光，永远都不会变成完全一片黑。在圣彼得堡的夏天呢，每天几乎是二十四小时都亮的。那就因为这种特殊的永昼现象，再加上这个城市丰富的文化历史以及好玩的夜生活，这使得人们会选在夏天的时候一窝蜂地跑去圣彼得堡来过暑假。好，这边出现两个单字 ，glow。Glow， 它是指发光，尤其是指发出微弱而稳定的光。这个字当动词。那 Jeff 老师提到 flicker 这个字 ，f l i c k e r。flicker 它是指闪烁、闪动。好，下一个单字 faint，faint faint, 在这边当形容词，形容微弱的、暗淡的。当光线或是声音很微弱的时候，我们可能就比较难察觉嘛。那这时候 Jeff 老师用到 perceive 这个动词。Perceive 它是拼作 P E R C E I V E， 这个字就表示察觉或是感知。接华课文中 ，Experience endless summer days in Saint Petersburg. If you're visiting Saint Petersburg, start with the Hermitage Museum. With over three million items, it is the second largest museum in the world and a symbol of Russia's love for art, history, and culture. Its collection features European paintings, ancient suits of armor, Stone Age relics, and many other treasures. When you think of a church, a pointed structure with stained glass windows probably comes to mind. But the Church of the Savior on Spilled Blood is not your typical church. 
Its onion-shaped domes and colorful patterns give this church the appearance of something out of a fairy tale. Inside, illustrations of scenes from the Bible decorate the church walls. Everyone, we're visiting St. Petersburg, a wonderful city there in Russia. It's a very European city inside of Russia. In fact, it was constructed to be a European-style city in Russia. And that's why, like Mike said before, that's why it's so architecturally wonderful and beautiful as well. Now, if you're visiting St. Petersburg, you've got to start with the Hermitage Museum. Not only is it filled with beautiful stuff, in and of itself, this building is gorgeous. That's right. It used to be a palace, I think. And as you mentioned, it is a museum to beat all museums. It says with over three million items, it is the second largest museum in the world and a symbol of Russia's love for art history and culture. If you really want to explore it, I would give up a couple of days to get a good look at it because it is filled with stuff. For example, its collection features European paintings, ancient suits of armor, Stone Age relics, and many other treasures, all for a very low price. Wow, that sounds awesome. It's awesome. What a collection they have there. And here, yes, we do have the noun collection to talk about. Here, a collection is a group of things, usually a well-ordered or arranged group of things. So here, the Hermitage has stuff, a lot of stuff. When we're talking about all that stuff in one place, we're talking about the collection of things there at the Hermitage. Anyways, for example, in this room, I keep my collection of rare butterflies. Yes, I collect rare butterflies, and then I put them all together in one place. You can call those, those things in that one place my collection of things. Anyways, let's move on and talk about churches. Yeah, museums are great. Churches are great as well. Now, when you think of a church, a pointed structure with stained glass windows probably comes to mind, right? Sure. Yeah. A lot of churches have pointed steeples or towers on top, and of course those beautiful colored glass windows, those stained glass windows are famous, absolutely. But, as we read on, but the Church of the Savior on Spilled Blood is not your typical church. That sounds kind of gruesome. It doesn't have a typical church name. Church of the Savior on the Hill might work, but unspilled blood is, is unusual. Let's find out about it. It's onion-shaped domes and colorful patterns give this church the appearance of something out of a fairy tale. Yeah, those onion-shaped domes like we see on that famous St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. That's kind of a, a style that's popular in Russia, in that part of the world. But the whole look of the church looks like it was sort of created for a, a storybook or a cartoon or something like that. Amazing. Anyways, let's go inside mm. this church. Inside, illustrations of scenes from the Bible decorate the church wall. So not only is the outside something to behold, the inside and the imagery in there is also wonderful. Absolutely. Regardless of your opinion of religion, you got to admit many churches, temples, other, you know, religious buildings like that are fascinating for the way they're decorated and built. And illustrations painted on the walls is a feature of many styles of church. An illustration is basically a picture. It's a drawing. It's a painting. It's something like that. It could be the simplest illustration of little stick men that you make while you're doodling, or it could be a painting or a drawing in a children's book or something else like that. Usually illustrations would not be photographs, but they would be something made basically by any other way. Paint, pencil, pen, anything like that could be an illustration. For example, the illustrations in this book are beautiful. Yeah, children's books yeah. often have beautiful illustrations. And usually with illustrations, what sets them apart from pictures or images is they tell a story. Mm. Illustrations tell a story or help to tell a story. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be back with more 
after this. 圣彼得堡有着令人赞叹的建筑。那 Jeff 老师用到 gorgeous 这个字 ，gorgeous 它是拼作 g o r g e o u s， 它是用来形容那边的建筑物，形容它非常美的或是引人入胜的、华丽的。那我们顺便补充一下 architecture。Architecture， 它是指建筑，是当名词。那它的形容词是 architectural。architectural， 它是拼作 a r c h i t e c t u r a l。那这个字表示建筑学的、建筑相关的。那在字尾加上 l y 就会变成副词 architecturally。architecturally， 这个副词就表示在建筑学上或者是建筑相关的。好，首先第一站，我们来到艾米塔吉博物馆。这馆内呢有超过三百万件的珍品，它是世界第二大的博物馆，也是俄罗斯他们热爱艺术、历史和文化的象征。那这个博物馆它的收藏品主要是欧洲的绘画啊，古代整套的盔甲、石器时代的遗物，还有许多其他宝物。那文中用到 armor，armor armor 就表示盔甲。那么 relic，relic relic 这个字表示遗物或是遗迹。至于单字 collection collection， 它表示收藏品或者是指收集收藏。下一站我们来到滴血救世主教堂，它不是你想的那一种典型教堂哦，像有着什么彩绘玻璃窗啊，是尖顶的建筑。其实这个教堂它的外观是像童话故事里面才会出现的建筑，它有着洋葱式的圆顶，还有色彩缤纷的图案。那教堂的内部是用圣经场景的插画来装饰墙面。我们先来看单字 ，illustration。illustration 就表示插画、图案或是图示。那文中的 dome， d o m e， dome 表示圆屋顶或者是半球形的东西。那么 stained glass， stained glass 在文中表示彩绘玻璃。Mike 老师这时候有用到一个字叫 steeple， s t e e p l e， steeple 就是指教堂的尖塔。顺便补充一下。Jeff 老师听到这个“滴血救世主教堂”这个名字的时候，他觉得听起来有点可怕。那这时候老师用到 “gruesome” 这个形容词 ，“gruesome” 是拼作 “g r u e s o m e”， 那这个字形容可怕的、惊悚、恐怖的。解华课文中 ，Experience endless summer days in Saint Petersburg. Next, explore the 18th-century Grand Peterhof Palace. You'll be stunned by its beautiful fountains, especially the golden Samson fountain, which shows Samson tearing open the mouth of a lion. Okay, so far we visited a museum that used to be a palace. Then we visited a church. Okay, next let's just go ahead and go to another palace, one that hasn't yet been converted into. A museum. Yes. Next, there in Saint Petersburg. Next, explore the 18th century Grand Peterhof Palace. And yes, you will not regret doing so. This 18th century palace is beautiful and wonderful to behold and to explore as well. By the way, if you explore something. You go, let's say, to a new place in order to learn about that place, to become familiar with that place, so on and so forth. Yes, you can explore un unknown lands and places and stuff like that, or you can just explore places when you go on vacation. It doesn't have to be super mysterious or dangerous or adventurous. You might just explore a palace. Go there, learn about it. See the place for yourself. By the way, the word "explore" is a verb. For example, it's dangerous to explore abandoned buildings. Yes, new continents, new lands, and also abandoned buildings. You should probably be careful if you're going to explore them.、Mm, could be dangerous in there for sure. But don't worry, the Grand Peterhof Palace. Is not dangerous. In fact, it's incredible. It says you'll be stunned by its beautiful fountains, especially the golden Samson fountain, which shows Samson tearing open the mouth of a lion. Well, I guess the, that the lion isn't tearing him apart. No, He's tearing the yeah, lion. Yeah, that lion、apart. stole his lunch. 
And so he's going to get this lunch bag. Of course, Samson is a Bible character famous for his great strength. Um, I don't remember him beating up lions, but he was a powerful dude, so I'm sure he could do that. And there's a golden fountain outside the Grand Peterhof Palace. So don't just explore the palace, explore the gardens and grounds around it. You won't regret it. And again, bring your camera, your cell phone. It sounds like there's tons of stuff to take cool pictures of. That's it for today. I think we've done a, well, a good job of scratching the surface of a visit to St. Petersburg, but tomorrow we'll be back with a whole lot more. So please join us for that. Until then, do svidaniya. Bye bye. 接着我们要去探访十八世纪的彼得霍夫宫，那边有一座美丽的喷泉，会让人感到非常震撼哦。那这边用到一个单字叫 explore。Explore， 它是动词，就表示探险、探访或是探究。顺便补充一下 ，Mike 老师说，我们今天的课文只有粗略的参观圣彼得堡。那这时候老师用到 scratch the surface of something， 这个用语呢，它是指对某事物略懂皮毛，没有深入的了解。那同学们别忘了要收看第二天的课程，跟我们一起继续旅行哦。好，以上是这个讲解，同学别离开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有三个，第一个是分词片语，第二个是 combine A with B， 第三个是 something come to mind。好，我们先来学分词片语。英文里面有现在分词和过去分词。当我们把关系子句简化成名词，加上现在分词或过去分词，就会变成分词片语。那要怎么简化呢？好，第一个步骤就是先省略关系代名词。第二个步骤是把动词改分词。主动或进行的时候，你就是用现在分词；被动的话，就是用过去分词。举例来说。Do you know the man who is wearing a green hat? 你认识那个戴绿帽的男生吗？嗯，不是那种戴绿帽，应该没有人从外表就可以看得出他被戴绿帽啊，这样有点惨。好啦，那句子里面的关系子句 ，Who is wearing a green hat？ 我们要把它简化成分词片语。那第一个步骤就是省略关系代名词 who。动词的部分 is wearing 是进行式，你只需要保留现在分词 wearing， 然后句子就可以简化成 Do you know the man wearing a green hat? 好，接着我们来学 combine A with B， 这就表示将 A 和 B 结合。其中的动词 combine 就表示使什么结合，或者是兼具了什么什么。我们也可以用被动语态 A 加上 be 动词加 combined with B。好，例如 ，The dessert combines the sourness of cranberries with the sweetness of chocolate。这道甜点它结合了蔓越莓的酸味和巧克力的甜味，酸酸甜甜好滋味，酸味啊酸味。好，最后我们来学 something come to mind， 它就表示某事物浮现在脑海或是想到某事物。那这个动词片语必须以事物作为主词，表达忽然想到、想起某事。那动词也可以用 spring 来替换，例如 when I think of London。Big Ben comes to mind immediately. 我一想到伦敦，脑海里就会浮现大笨钟 Big Ben， 不是乐团，那个是念 Big Bang。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。用英文表达好险哦。谁要打？啊啊啊哦太 close. <laughs> anyway, so we're here today. I'm Holly. I'm Shane. Yeah, so we're here to express how close we are. Yeah. So you guys say he was close. I was close. Close. 差一点，幸好。哎，那个是呀，这个动作很重要。<笑>就是捏一把冷汗这样子。Yeah. How How's my 表达的方式呢 ？We dodged the bullet. 哦、oh, ，一定要这样子就对。We dodged the bullet. 其实不一样。Okay. Bullet. Again, you can. Yeah, bullet 其实就是子弹的意思，然后你可能就是直接选，就是差一点 hit you 这样子。We dodge. 可是你 dodge 就是这样。哇！对对对对。<笑>所以你没有被打到这样子，所以我们逃过一劫这样。OK， 还有呢 
That was a close shave. Shave 不是刮胡子吗？对，那个 shave 感觉就是很细、很细的那个一个，你懂我意思吗 ？OK， 所以就是因为你刮胡子，那个刀其实离你的皮肤很近，对,对，所以其实就是差一点点就。就如,如果你在切 cheese， 你要、嗯、你要 shave， 那 shave 的感觉就是。哦，切薄片的，对，所以这个哦， yeah, yeah. Oh, just this much， 差一点点这么薄。对对对对对对对 OK， 还有 that was a close call。Oh， OK， that was a close call。那 call， 对，不是打电话。<笑> oh， that was a close call <笑>。Call is like maybe in sports，、uh -huh. and there's maybe a race， the two horses are racing， and they say A is the winner。But actually, it's very hard to see. So you call it, and you, you don't know which one you're going to call, A or is B. Oh, okay, okay. So, 就是其实你在越过那个终点线，有时候就是很难看得出来。如果真的很近的话，但是你要 call， 谁赢了，谁输了，你知道吗？就是 close call， 就是感觉就是差一点点。Okay， 对对,對，都都是差一点点。<笑>如果你觉得哦，好幸运哦 ，someone's watching out for you. Oh, okay. 就是今天有人就是在上天眷顾你。God, <laughs> yeah. it's like saying thank God. 就比如说你今天就是那个差一点出车祸，哈，就差这么一点点就被撞烂之类的。Someone's watching out for us. Yeah, 就 you, 然后你没有 us, 没有事的话 ，Yeah， 人家就会说哦，今天有人在照顾你，幸好没事这样子。Thank God, my phone is okay. Someone's watching out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Live action, yeah, live action. Let's go. That was close. I thought our boss knew that we arrived late this morning. Seriously, that was a close shave. I heard that he yelled at Anna for being late yesterday. Yeah, he did. I was there when he screamed at her. He was so angry. It looks like we totally dodged a bullet. Yeah, somebody must be watching out for us. Number one, that was close. Number two, we dodged a bullet. Number three, that was a close shave. Number four, that was a close call. Number five, someone's watching out for you. <laughs>